is the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, 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 yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a teaching tutorial Thursday. Class is in session with Professor Greg Cosell from NFL Films University. We are diving into the NFC West draft choices with Greg. I don't know anybody else that does this. We talk mainly about the top picks and then a lower pick or two that Greg likes. Obviously, on the College Draft Podcast, we are all over more of the late round picks and the undrafted guys. It's important. It's a good way to talk about these players. Good way to talk about these teams and what we're thinking about them heading into the down period in the NFL. There's a coming up in about three weeks. There will be a six weeks of not a whole lot. Uh, but the show never stops here because there's always a lot to talk about, including winners. We've got those of you that decide to step up and support our team media, support the Ross Tucker Podcast Network, and you deserve to be recognized. I want winners. I want people that want to win. Spread the word winner was pretty easy this week. Now, I might not have said it till yesterday's show. So as a result, maybe not a lot of you got a chance to do it, but it's Andy from Connecticut. He said, Ross is the best friend every guy wishes he had, knowledgeable and entertaining. Love the interaction between Ross and Brian. Awesome. So anyway, that's from Andy in Connecticut. That was a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. I'll just tell you right now, that's how you can win the Spread the Word winner next week as well. Just a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and go ahead leave a review so I can read it, see your name, and then boom, you will get a great chance, I mean great chance, to be the Spread the Word winner via social media. Sponsor confirmation email winner, Muhammad Alabadi. He ordered some UFOs. Gosh, I love me some UFOs. The greatest footwear I've ever put on these feet in my entire life. YouTube shout out, Chris Owens. So Andy and Muhammad, let me know if you want to sign press pass or picture or football card or whatever. Chris Owens, you get a shout out, buddy. You get a cameo style video for whoever you want, even if it's yourself. Just let me know. Ross at RossTucker.com. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Always joined at least once a week by the great Greg Cosell from NFL Films University. At Greg Cosell is where you can find him on social media. We are wrapping up the NFC. We'll start with the AFC East next week. But we're wrapping up the NFC with the NFC West today. I did want to ask you one quick thing, Greg, um, and I didn't give you a heads up on this, sorry, but I think you're pretty familiar with him. Stephon Tuitt, longtime defensive lineman for the Steelers, retired yesterday. He'd been banged up a lot in recent yeah. years. But, Greg, I'm telling you, there were years and certainly games where he was a dominant, dominant guy. I mean, without he, question, there, I mean, I, there were times where he and Hayward and even Hargrave <laughs> a year or two, they were killing dudes. Yeah. And uh, he's not exactly like the guy I'm going to mention because the guy I'm going to mention just got into the Hall of Fame. But I think with his size and versatility, in some ways, he was deployed much like a Richard Seymour was deployed with the Patriots. And there were times he was a very, very dominant player who could play multiple positions in your defensive front. Yeah, there's no question. Um, that's a good comp, actually. Not, not, not as good, not as consistent, and certainly didn't stay as healthy. No, um, no, exactly. But a heck of a player, and I, I don't know, I, I think some Steelers fans seem pretty surprised that he ended up retiring, but um, he issued a statement. There were a number of reasons why he did it. Had a tragedy in the family, the injuries. He got his degree, degree from Notre Dame. He was ready to move on. Let's get um, Greg into the Arizona Cardinals 
who didn't have a first round pick because they traded it for Hollywood Brown, Greg. I don't remember if you and I talked about that and got your thoughts on that. Well, they're obviously looking for receivers. We know that um, uh, Hopkins is suspended for the first six games. Uh, they're looking for receivers. They have an older A.J. Green who has moments a year ago, but he's clearly on, on the bottom end of his career. So they're looking for quality wideouts. Um, you know, what I found most interesting about that is Brown did not want to be in Baltimore. That That is a, diff- a whole nother conversation, but that's very interesting. So, I mean, I guess right now as we start the season, if you look at their outside receivers when they go three wide, we're looking at Green, Brown, and Moore. Um, Brown is is mostly a vertical receiver. He, he, he certainly can work underneath at times. Very good run after catch, an explosive athlete. Um We'll see how he fits into this offense. I mean, it, the fascinating thing to me about what they did is they drafted, to me, the best tight end prospect in the draft in the second round. And Trey McBride is a very good prospect, Ross, and they still have Zach Ertz. And a lot of people, because it's Cliff Kingsbury, might think, oh, this is an air raid, spread the field, 3-4 wide. This is a team that has played with a lot of 12 personnel over the last couple of years. They play a lot with two tight ends on the field. So it's going to be interesting to me, and we don't know the answer to this at this moment. It's going to be interesting to me to see whether this team plays, you know, 35, 40%, 12 personnel. They could well do that. That is interesting. Um, I'm a big McBride fan. Um, I, I, I called one of his games a couple of years ago against Fresno State. I watched him. He'll get after you as a blocker. Um, he is physical. He's rugged. I, I, I thought he was a stud. Yeah, I agree. I liked him more than many others did. Uh, again, I'm not going to sit here and say he's Waller, Kelsey. You know, he, obviously no one's Kyle Pitts. But I, McBride did line up as the boundary X in college. He ran routes on the outside. I like Trey McBride. I thought he was very worthy of a second-round pick. What about the next two guys they drafted? Uh, they got a DN Cameron Thomas from San Diego State, and then yep. my guy Sanders, the undersized edge rusher from Cincinnati. Yeah, I <clears throat> I think those are good picks given what they do defensively. Okay, what Vance Joseph does is he moves people around an awful lot. He's very multiple with his front alignments because Thomas, to me, is not a pure edge rusher. Neither will Sanders be that guy in the NFL, given how slim he is. But those guys can work in multiple front alignments where you move them around, you try to create one-on-ones, you try to break down protections. Um, I I thought those were good picks that were team and scheme specific. Any of the other guys? I mean, they had a bunch of sixth and seventh round picks. Keontae Ingram. USC, Lasita Smith, Virginia Tech, Christian well, Matthew, Valdosta State. The guy I kind of like is Jesse Lucada from Penn State, Greg. Just because- yeah, I how, again, he fits that mold because he played both off the ball at Penn State and on the ball. So he's another one of those players, and I know you're familiar with him, Ross, another one of those players that plays multiple positions along your defensive front. That clearly was something they were looking for in this draft, but it absolutely fits what Vance Joseph does. Absolutely. Let's move on to the Rams. Boy, it's interesting. NFC West, not a lot of first-round picks. The Rams don't have a first-round pick or a second-round pick. In the third round, they took Logan Bruss, a guard from Wisconsin. They like their Wisconsin offensive linemen. They sure do. And the the next couple picks, Jacoby Durant, corner from South Carolina State, Kyron Williams, the running back from Notre Dame. Any of those guys jump out to you? Um. I did not see the second one that you mentioned, the corner, but Bruss I did see. He's – in many ways, your classic Wisconsin lineman, they'll move him inside. He played tackle, right tackle at Wisconsin. My guess is he'll end up being a guard for uh, uh, for the Rams, and it wouldn't surprise me given their offensive line situation if he even gets an opportunity to start. Another one of those just very solid you know, uh, O-line prospects. Wisconsin puts a ton of those guys out seemingly every year. Um And then Kyron Williams, I was not surprised where he went. To me, he's a receiving back in this league. Ultimately, the player who he reminded me of was James White. I think that's what his role in the NFL will be. Interesting. Okay. 
Then they got Quentin Lake from UCLA, Darian Kendrick, corner from Georgia, Daniel Hardy, a guy I'm familiar with, DN from Montana State. They always have a lot of picks because of all the comp picks, which I think is interesting. Let's move on to the Niners, Greg. And again, no first round pick for the San Francisco 49ers. They did take in the second round an interesting player to me in Drake Jackson, the edge rusher in yeah. USC. <laughs> yeah, Jackson is um he flashed a lot of traits, you know, a lot of pass rush traits. But I think the other factor too is he played multiple positions in USC. He's not just an edge player. There were times where he lined up as a joker, standing off the ball in the middle of the defense. Um, I would, I don't know how they see him within the context of their defense, how D'Amico Ryan sees him. I mean, clearly this is a team that plays with four down linemen, but they also, uh, when they go to their, their sub defenses, they do a lot of things up front. They line up in those loaded fronts with three defenders to one side of the offensive center. They do a lot of different things. So I, I'll be very curious to see if he's ready to play early in his career, how they deploy him. But there were times he showed outstanding pass rush traits off the edge with great lateral quickness, some explosion to his game. You know, he kind of reminds me of Arden Key, the guy that they got yeah. some production from last year and then let go in free agency. Yeah, they lost that's, Arden that's, Key. That's kind of the guy he reminded me of. What about the two skill kids they took in the third round, Greg? Tyreon Davis Price, the running back from LSU, and Danny Gray, the wide receiver from SMU. Well, I really like Ty Davis Price a lot. I got to him late in the process, and I was not surprised when the 49ers drafted him, and it would not surprise me just like Elijah Mitchell as a sixth-round rookie a year ago, got meaningful reps. He essentially became their feature back, but he got hurt a lot because he's not that big. Davis Price could play a lot this year. He's a big athletic back. He's got burst, acceleration. He had some natural bend to him. Uh, he had a physical presence. He kept his pads low. He finished runs with velocity and power. He, I mean, I really like this kid. I was, in some ways, because I got to him late and didn't know what to expect, I, I was kind of blown away by this kid. I think he's got all the running traits you want in an NFL foundation back. To me, there's no question that over time he can carry a volume load. Uh, if you want to give him the ball 16 to, to 20 times a game, he can do that. He's over six feet. He's 211. I really liked his tape a lot. They had a lot of picks and a bunch of guys I know. Sam Womack had uh, a great career at Toledo. Uh, Nick Zakel, they get the tackle from Fordham. You don't see that often. A Patriot League guy getting drafted. Tariq Castro Fields in the sixth round, the guy that yeah, has some ability. And, boy, he was a frustrating player to watch because he's long, he's athletic, he really looks the part. Uh, Ross and and I don't know how much you know about him. He stayed at Penn State, played all his years. He looks to me like, with coaching, with experience, I don't know the kid obviously that he has the traits to be a quality outside corner. But it didn't show up often enough on tape, which is why he was a sixth round pick. But there's something there with this kid if they can get it out of him. Let's move on, uh, last but not least, to the Seattle Seahawks. Very interesting draft. They had a lot of picks. Yep. And I want to start with this. They took Charles Cross with the ninth overall pick, the tackle for Mississippi yes. State. They got Kenneth Walker in the second round. I'll get to Boye Mafe later. That We know Pete Carroll likes to run the ball. We know that. We know that's what he wants to do. We know they don't really have a very good quarterback right now. Then they took Abraham Lucas in the third round. Here's what I'm scratching my head a little bit about, Greg. They took two offensive tackles that are really pass blockers, really pass-protecting offensive tackles in the first and third rounds, and yet they took a running back in the second <clears throat> round who doesn't have a much of a history of right. catching the ball out of the backfield. I, I just 
It's a little bit of a head scratcher for me, Greg. It's like, are you going to run the rock a lot? If that's the case, then I think Cross and Lucas are interesting. If you're going to throw the ball a lot, then okay. Are you expecting, you know, Walker to catch the ball? I mean, I, I don't know. It didn't really seem like it fit to me, but you you watch them closer than I do. Well, it's funny you say that. Obviously, both of those tackles came from air raid style offenses. So the immediate thought is that they're pass protectors. Um, Lucas actually has a, a number of flaws in pass protection. Um, I think actually he's he had a lot of really good run blocking reps. I think he can be a very, very good run blocker. Um, Cross is just a really good player with great balance, great body control, great feet. He'll he'll become a good run blocker. But there's no question this was a draft that told you how they want to play. Now, whether with Pete Carroll, we don't know if that's a function of just a general belief or if it's because at this point they have Geno Smith and Drew Locke and we don't know exactly how that's going to play out. Um, but – Clearly, they're going to run the ball. They wanted to fortify their offensive line, um, and they wanted to fortify their running back position because right now they have Rashad Penny, who they signed, who over the last five, six games of last year was as good a back as there was in the league, and Kenneth Walker is an outstanding back who's a volume-type back. They both can't be volume backs. We know that. But they pretty much told you how they want to play. What did you think of Boye Mafi, their second round pick? Yeah, I thought Boye Mafi is a little bit of a work in progress. Um, really strong, really powerful. I thought really needs to learn how to rush the quarterback, which can be taught, of course. Um, two guys that they drafted, Mafi and Tyreek Smith from Ohio State, one of the most frustrating players I've watched in over the last number of years. He is athletic. He's looks the part boy when you watch his tape he has some reps where you go wow but just struggles with balance and body control but another guy if you can get it out of him he'll be a very interesting guy um and then there's Tariq Woolen I'm to be honest I was surprised he won in the fifth round now he's got a ways to go but there's not a lot of 6'4 215 pound corners Ross who run 426 and his speed shows up on tape yeah, I mean, he must have a ways to go because he does. those physical traits are off the charts. I mean, yeah, he does, but he's he's a fascinating prospect because of that. Excellent work as always, Greg. Really appreciate it. Highly encourage everyone to check Greg out on social media at Greg Cosell so you always know everything that he's up to. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. I appreciate you, Greg. I appreciate all of you that realize – with Father's Day coming up in a couple weeks, there is no better gift to get your dad than a story from myfrontpagestory.com. Look, maybe you have an anniversary coming up or a birthday or whatever, and you want to get it for somebody else. But with father, nobody ever knows what to get their dad for Father's Day. Yeah, I don't know what to get him. I, get him a story from myfrontpagestory.com. Your dad loves the newspaper. Fact. Fact, your dad loves the newspaper. Get him his own front page story with him on the cover that he'll have forever and he'll be able to read a story that with quotes from you and your siblings about how great of a dad he's been for you. That is so money, it's not even funny. He will love it. Maybe even get some quotes from the grandkids if you want. Incredible. Myfrontpagestory.com. Tux Takes. Let's start today, Ross, with the Madden video game. And uh, the cover was announced, and it is none other than John Madden. Right. Very fitting tribute. Uh, I'm, I'm sure this was about a five-second decision for them with uh, John passing and just uh, how iconic he was, the video game that bears his name. This was the right choice. I'm glad they made it. Tux Takes. Vikings signed uh, Albert Wilson, wide receiver. I feel like Albert Wilson, I, I, I feel like, I can't remember the last time he really did very much. You know what I mean? Like, he, he always gets signed by these different teams. You're like, oh, he's got speed. But I don't, I mean, I don't remember him really doing all that much. It seems like he's still living on a couple years ago. Ducks takes. You and Greg mentioned Stefan Tuitt retiring from the Steelers. Any other thoughts? Well, just that um, 
I, you know, you should read his statement. I'm not going to read the whole thing here on the show, but you should read his statement and uh, what he said about retiring because it was a combination, I think, of the injuries, a tragedy in his family, and he got his degree from Notre Dame and felt like it was time to move on. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. I think, and I think I tweeted this at Ross Tucker NFL when Ali Marpet retired. But if you're really looking at the entirety of your life, right? Hopefully 80, 90 years, whatever it is, I think you are much more likely to regret retiring too late than retiring too early. Because if you retire, quote unquote, too early, uh, you're saving your brain a little more, you're saving your body a little bit more. And hopefully, you know, that extra year or two of compensation or of playing the game is not because it ends at some point for everybody anyway. Tux takes sad news out of Dallas. Former Cowboys running back Marion Barber found dead in his apartment in Frisco, Texas. What is going on? I mean, I, I haven't seen the cause of death or I haven't seen anything like that, but I, I just it hurts my heart. You know, we, we mentioned Jeff Gladney yesterday on the show. Now we're mentioning Marion Barber, who I think was 38, 39. I mean, these guys are just way, way, way too young to be passing away. Again, I don't know the cause of death. And again, it doesn't really matter. You know, whatever it is, it's incredibly sad. Marion Barber, I absolutely loved the way he ran. Absolutely loved his running style. Just so physical. I think they called him like Marion the Barbarian. I mean, he was... He was a joy to watch. As an offensive lineman, he was a joy to watch and the guy, kind of guy that got the whole team riled up. Tux takes. Commander's owner Daniel Snyder and the NFL commissioner Roger Goodell are going to testify at a hearing regarding Washington's culture. This is in front of the U.S. House Committee. Right. This is all the um, sexual harassment allegations and uh, looking into Washington's football team's uh, workplace culture. I, I have so many comments or questions here. So I don't understand the process, but this is like what the U.S. House is focused on right now. I mean, I don't know, Brian. I, I guess I would just think there are other departments as opposed to like our national representatives are focused on what's going on with a football team's workplace culture. I, I guess I thought there were other agencies. I am, maybe I'm showing my ignorance. I'm not being critical. I guess I'm just, I, I'm surprised that that is what the U S house of representatives, one of their committees is focusing on uh, with everything else going on in the world, our country, et cetera. I'd also say this, this is not good for the NFL. Anytime Cadell is there and there's cameras and you're being asked questions by, you know, legislators, that's not good. I mean, and you got to think Goodell is just so sick of it and Snyder putting him in this predicament where he has to be doing this. Uh, but that's why Goodell gets paid the big bucks to basically have to do things like this that he really doesn't want to do what you should do what you should want to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now use promo code Ross make any five dollar bet during the NBA finals which kicks off tonight and get $150 in free bets instantly that's promo code Ross only at DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Let's get to an email, Bright. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, well here's, here's your, your chance. chance. It's time to ask Ross. So you know how much I love this. I love when you ask me questions and I get to answer them. I think it's really good content for the show. So please keep them coming. Take advantage of a sponsor or rate and review the show. Send me that screenshot with your question and send it to Ross at RossTucker.com. It really is that easy. What do you got, Bry? So question today, how difficult is it to switch sides and stay playing at an elite level? I'm referring mainly to tackles, but the question can be extended to guards too. 
Just wonder as we see teams take tackles high, like the Giants this year, Lions last year in the draft, despite having a left tackle, is it easy to have them play right tackle for years and then switch sides later? Or is positional value less important than it used to be in terms of right tackle versus left tackle? You know, Miami paid a lot of money for a left tackle, despite Tua being a lefty, so not on the blind side. Love to hear your comments on that, tackles and guards, if time permits. That is from our friend Muhammad Alabadi. Yeah, he took advantage of the athletic greens code. Love it, Muhammad. Muhammad likes to take advantage of codes. I love it. Gets his questions answered. Awesome. So the answer is, Muhammad, it's difficult. You know, it's hard to explain, but a three-point stance is not like a natural position, right? Like it's not – it's an uncomfortable position. Just picture it. Just – you know, getting a stance, three-point stance, it's just, it's not a natural, comfortable position that human beings are intended to be in. So you play, you, you get used to one of them, right? Left tackle, left tackle, left tackle. Uh, now, Evan Neal for the Giants actually moved around a decent amount, so he's not a great example. But other guys, right? Left tackle, left tackle, like Sewell, Penny Sewell, left tackle, left tackle. So you get comfortable being in that uncomfortable position and then they switch it then you have to go to a different position and it's once again uncomfortable now it's not as bad as like if you're just first starting but it's still not a comfortable thing it's something you have to work on and it's just reps you can become elite again but you really have to put the time in to get comfortable again on the other side and that's exactly what these guys will have to do uh positional value is less important than it used to be i don't think there's really any difference between right tackle and left tackle anymore and the whole blind side thing it doesn't matter you got to protect where the best guys are rushing from and a lot of them come over the right tackle think about tj watt and others uh, and it's the same really whether you're playing tackle or guard it really is it's very similar to switch sides. You know, I'm a guy that could play all five. And I guess I kind of, on some level, got used to playing all five. So I got used to being somewhat comfortable in all five spots as opposed to really comfortable in any one spot. Great question, Muhammad. Shout-outs are in order, of course, to Pizza Boy Brewing, delicious, Sportaculture, humanheadnyc.com, steakhousesports.com, go-bangles.com, Evergreen Economics. I really enjoyed yesterday's Fantasy Feast with Joe Dolan. Encourage you guys to check that out, breaking down the running back power rankings. And then, of course, even money was awesome, absolutely awesome this week. Check that one out as well. Um, other than that, we got plenty of shows for you to listen to the next few days. We'll be back bright and early Monday morning. Have a great weekend. Summer is here. Maybe not officially, but it's here. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.